Then he decided to join the integrated PhD program in TIA for Mumbai, and he is a proud member for four years now as a nano as a team of his lab in nano electronics. He will be telling you. He will be telling us. how we can quench one of the dimensions in our three dimensional world and see the fascinating physics behind the two dimensional physics along with that he will be sharing insight into his own research work where he is using quistronics to produce the world's most robust but flexible material the gold in 3d world is yellow in color right now let me tell you a very fascinating thing in the bottom right panel what i am showing you is essentially very very small particles of gold Fast forward to 2000 years and now in 2000, 2020 we have this amazing demonstration by google last year i guess where they have demonstrated quote unquote quantum supremacy time so these are images right from our lab and as i so show you here so these are the 2d transistors how they look so these are the transistors which will revolutionize Uh, the present century and how this loop is these are kind of some uh, sheet like objects okay very flat and the flatness as i as i introduced earlier is of the order of nanometer so the mores law tells us that the transistor count actually doubles every 2 year it means that you are accumulating more and more transistors in small places small places and if if you try to continue that ultimately everything will shrink in a small point like structure and that is not possible so is actually a measure of the charge in the system so when the fermi level is up that means all the states below has been filled up with charges is the resistance in the x direction the resistance in the x direction drops very close to zero and theoretically it is zero and that's when you leap up your chair and say yeah we have solved the energy crisis we have got some materials which are resistance less and we have so we are we have made a giant step in solving the problem so we will the members of a particular family of topology can be deformed smoothly from one way to the other so if i show you this schematic of clay model of the cup and the medwada you will see that what i am doing here is that i am smoothly deforming the cup into a medwara yes. so i have two places and due to symmetry arguments you can immediately say that this electron's charge has now been divided into e by 2 and e by 2 and that's something magical right because you know from your textbooks the electron charge is indivisible so this is a simple uh, illustration of how weird this uh, effect is this is a cartoon i drew there here is the man traveling along the edges and along these edges very interesting things are happening like a man is reversing and so on and so forth and it is raining topological that means there are uh, the rain actually have topologies of different kinds so this has zero holes this has one hole and here is a special cup which has two holes and this is characteristic of this kind of a device <laughs> this is one uh, um, zoomed in image of uh, one of our ri writings of in the pencil on a paper like this may, means using the gum you uh, take you take some graphite in it first okay some pencil lead you take and you then do like this like this many a times and what you do is you have uh, you have kind of exfoliated the graphene or thin layers from of the graphite that if you zoom into the energy versus momentum spectra of graphene then what you see here it is uh, the fact that here i have got a cone the energy versus momentum is kind of linear so yes and that is photons of massless particle so the electron here is not massless but it is kind of this excitations that is behaving in the lattice as massless here, and this is that some structure is occurring so let's say i twist it at a very small angle you see here 1 2 3 4 5 places the lattice constant has kind of increased so as i decrease the angle between these two layers on the left hand side you see that when i reach this 1 degree angle what is happening here is that the uh, objects or the sorry the bands here is kind of getting very flat and what does flatness means when the bands get flat i just told you earlier that the slope of the e versus k kind of gives you the uh, velocity of the electron so when uh, in 3d material suppose uh, you suppose if you do a dft calculation 
so you generally you do for bulk uh, mm. now uh, if you go to a yeah. 2D, uh, 2d two dimension that means yeah. that you create some unit cell then you give some vacuum so mm. in generally you do not see a band structure like split like this so i so my so i wanted to know the dimension like how how much thick uh, it has to be oh so, yeah so that is a good question so you have to be uh, lesser than your reciprocal k vector uh, okay so in the perpendicular direction you have uh, this uh, lattice constant so you have some lattice uh, yeah. yeah so the way to think about this is that that z direction has to be lower than i guess the uh, fermi wavelength or something so that is very small so it is in the nanometer world so that is the uh, length scale in which we have to uh, quench to get this so this is the schematic to explain the origin of the edge states but i guess you are more uh, interested in knowing the bulk state the bulk here as i showed is kind of insulator so if you see here these are the region where you have the edge states uh, this is the schematic for understanding the edge states but the bulk are kind of uh, forming some quantized levels and it is insulating depending on where you place the fermi what is that error bar or yeah. that range within which you expect to see some physics and beyond that range like some new physics start to creep in say what would be the error bar say with respect to 1 degree or 1.1 oh, okay okay so actually what happens is that i am saying about this 1 degree 1.1 degree and that is uh, because in the theoretical calculations you um, when you do for a twisted bilayer that is one graphene and another graphene you have to have this precise magic angles okay the right. theoretical calculation shows that it goes down the bands become flat at 1.1 degree it again becomes flat at some another second angle at 0.5 degree or something like that but what we are trying to do is that we are trying to have the effect of another knob which is called the electro electric field what we are trying to do is that we don't take uh, twisted bilayer graphene we take twisted double bilayer graphene double bilayer graphene what it does it plays a role um, in uh, means the electric field can be an additional knob and that actually gives us some flexibility because if you even if you have to start with an angle let's say 1.5 degree or 1.25 degree then also you can have this kind of some interesting physics happening in this twisted double bilayer devices okay so you mean to say that it gives a better control or it kind yeah. of increases the range of like the range is uh, okay. uh, widened i see angle i see range. i see thanks thanks it was a thank you all for joining and it was my first webinar so i was super excited and um, i am thankful that all of you took this opportunity to come here and listen to me thanks the researchers of the present are going to give you your future so we should learn to respect them and to value them much more so that is exactly what we try to do here at researcher on web we try to bring together researchers come bring collaborations between researchers to make sure researchers can reach a bigger audience and that every science enthusiast out there can know where the field of research is going